Welcome to this video in the Blueprint of Life topic. This video is going to be looking at the syllabus dot point, analyze information from secondary sources to outline the evidence that led to Beadle and Tatum's one gene, one protein hypothesis, and to explain why this was altered to the one gene, one polypeptide hypothesis. George Beadle began his work on genetics with Thomas Hunt Morgan on the eye color pigment of fruit flies before moving to Stanford University in 1937 and began working with Edward Tatum. They continued working with the eye colour of the fruit fly, however were beaten to the conclusion they were seeking by another scientist. After this, Beadle and Tatum shifted their focus to the bread mould Neurospora crassa. The reason for this shift is the mould was, was a much easier organism to work with as it grew quickly, required only a simple medium for growth, and the spores that were produced during reproduction were easy to isolate for analysis. In 1941, they were able to show that it was the genes that directed the creation of enzymes that are involved in a variety of metabolic processes. Their aim was to investigate the effect of radiation on the production of enzymes, and to do this, they exposed the bread, the bread molds to x-rays, a form of radiation. The molds that they were exposed to sorry, the molds that were exposed to the x-rays produced genes that were different to the original genes therefore mutations. They then cross these mutated spores with the non-mutated spores. When these two variations of mold were placed into the simple medium, the mutated spores would not grow. However, the non-mutated spores were able to multiply. From the table, we can see that they found that the mutated mold was unable to grow on the simple medium unless a specific amino acid was added. When only the mi minimal medium was present, there was no growth at all. With other mutations, we can see that the growth was evident with the introduction of a particular amino acid. In particular, if we look at mutant 3, we can see that the only time that this mold was able to grow was when the amino acid arginine was added. This showed Biddle and Tatum that the gene that coded for the amino acid arginine was altered due to the exposure to x-rays. This image shows that the only test tube that showed any growth was a test tube that had the minimal growth plus the arginine present, tying back in with the table on the previous slide. When Beadle and Tatum carried out these experiments, we had a minimal understanding of proteins and their makeup. At this time, it was believed that proteins and enzymes were made up of one polypeptide chain. It is for this reason they proposed the one gene, one protein hypothesis, as they saw that the change in the one gene in the bread mold resulted in the change in the protein formed. Over time, however, it was discovered that some proteins can be made up of more than one polypeptide chain. For example, we now know that hemoglobin is made up of four polypeptide chains. In the late 1950s, protein fingerprinting was able to look closer at protein structures and found that genetic variations in proteins could be limited to differences in just one polypeptide chain, leading to the change in the hypothesis from one gene, one protein, to the one gene, one polypeptide hypothesis instead. What you now need to do is go to your booklet and find the dot point that corresponds to this video. You will find some more information to have a read of relating to Beadle and Tatum's experiments, along with a link to an interactive animation that explains their experiments with some easy to follow visual, visuals and audio. As you work through the animation, you are also required to answer the six questions in your booklet. Thank you.